go, uh, they rotate. So you go to a restaurant uh, for lunch and you order a certain menu and it tastes a certain way. During the dinner time, there's a different chef, but it's the same menu with the same ingredients and recipe, but it tastes different. Have you, have you experienced it before? Yeah, so depending on who the chef is, with the same ingredients and same recipe, they come up with a different taste. Yeah? No. And I heard that, you know, nothing tastes like what mom has cooked for us. Yeah, not, not only because we grew up eating that and we have a special attachment to that, you know, we have a memory, but, um, but also, I'm trying to recognize you. Okay, who are you? <laughs> Me? Yes, Teresa? No, 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 no. I forgot. TJ. Oh, PJ. All right, TJ, that's right. Yeah, sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses, and I'm supposed to be wearing my glasses. <laughs> I thought you were TJ, um, but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, well, so welcome back. So, then, um, you know, uh, so you inherit, oh, okay, so I'm gonna give you like a traditional, like a traditional example. It may not, it may not be um, fair for some, some of you, but, but for the sake of illustration, okay? So uh, you get married to a man, right? Are you married? No. no okay. So you get married to a man, and I'm, I'm, I'm being very traditional Asian, typical Asian, okay? And this illustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not being Chinese, okay? So I think because I think Chinese men are very good cooks, okay? But say you get married, and you know you love this person, so you want to cook the best dish, and uh, mm -hmm. your husband says, you know, my mom used to make this, you know, mm -hmm. this uh, special soup, and I love it, and whenever I have it, like it's my comfort food, it comforts me. Um, can you make that for me? So you're like, okay, oh, oh sure. So you go to your mother-in-law and inherit the recipe. The recipe. This is the recipe. <laughs> so <laughs> you're laughing. So you bring it home. You've got the same ingredients. You, you, you listen to it very carefully, and this is a very straightforward recipe. There's no complicated part to it. Made exactly the same, and your husband goes, "Oh, oh that's not what I. Oh no, like it's just it doesn't taste the same." Mm. Is he just complaining? Um, it might be, but then you know, like. The chances are probably no, it, it tastes a little bit different, mm -hmm. even with the same recipe. Because I heard, I don't know how true it is, uh, your body actually contributes to the flavor of the dish. So different people have different make makeup, different physical types. Have you heard of like the different uh, physical types that you uh, you go to a Chinese uh, clinic, you know, like the acupuncturist or you know, somebody who um, scans you, diagnoses you uh, in a different way than Western medicine, right? And then um, he gives you like, oh, you know what? You are young, not yin. Uh, you're like, you know, uh, you're not large but small. Um, yeah, so there's like large and small category and then there's like yin and yang category. And so there's a combination. So you can come up with like more than four categories. And so, depending on your type, so if you're yin and you make the same recipe, mm -hmm. and if you're if a different person, other chef comes in and he's yang, you create the same dish because of your physical type, it because you you emanate energy, you carry with you your presence and energy, it affects the dish, so your dish tastes different. That's what I heard. So um, in the past, just to give you an illustration. Um, in the past, they used to not hire female chefs for sushi restaurants. Mm. You know that? Because, I don't know if it's true, it's only a hearsay, but just to illustrate the point. Because females tend to have like, um, uh, hotter hands, I don't know. Like you have more energy in your hands. Mm. So when you make sushi, you're supposed to have cold hands. So you dip your hands in the cold water constantly to keep it. Mm. Yeah, and that's the best sushi. But then, because your um, hands are so warm, mm. even if you dip it in the cold water constantly, it's going to be higher temperature, mm. and it affects the sushi, and it doesn't come yes. out as good. Mm. And that's why they didn't use to hire you know chefs. Mm. Well, but this is not proven. I, I just only heard heard it from someone. So then, um, I guess your body type and you know who you are it affects the dish, right? Isn't it interesting? So uh, my point is not to talk about sushi. I'm not talking about artificial intelligence even. 
my uh, point is that we have a desire to create, make something, and improve something. When we say something, we're like, I mean, there are people who could care less, like, okay, whatever, okay, I, I'm okay with dumb phone, you know, like, I'm okay with, like, I don't know, old uh, fat TV, like, I'm okay, you know, okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. But then there are people who are, like, more innovators. Oh, you know, I can't stand this. How can I make it flat? How can I make it, like, more clear? You know, like, um, I think you're the type, the, the type of person, maybe, yeah? Huh? You like the, the you want to see the most advanced technology and you want to utilize it. You yeah. want to know, yeah. So then, um, it does not matter um, whatever you're interested in technology or investment of technology. But you don't have to be a futurist. But we have a desire to create. You know, even weaving or crochet, right? Um, TJ, I don't, I don't know what you do for your creativity, but you know, some people, um, you know, make models, you know, like, a, I don't know, it could be a house model, it could be any kind of model. You know, uh, kids, they would play with Lego, and they build something. When they go to the ocean, they build, like, a uh, sand castle. That's creativity. Like, you don't have to teach them, you don't have to tell them, like, step by step, okay, this is how you build it. No, you just put them together, like, okay, go play. They start making something, right? So creativity is in us. Yeah? Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's because they don't have consciousness. Yeah, we're not thinking about it. We're like, AI. but maybe in the future they can. Because the thing is now we don't know what consciousness is. Mm. But in the future, yeah, maybe they can. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then they can do some creative things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because human beings also um, put in that algorithm for creativity. If they are not given that creativity, that that algorithm. They have no creativity, right? So somebody had to put it in there, at least initially. Yeah, but I see your point. So, um, so creativity is a characteristic of human being. Main characteristic. Yeah, and uh, so we actually want to create that desire resulted in artificial intelligence. They wanted to make people want to make someone in their own image. That's what they're getting at. You know, um, what's a better artificial intelligence? What did you grow up like having this no. transformer? How many, of, how many of you know transformer? Oh, nobody's from it. Okay, so I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an artist, okay? So, uh, okay. Um, um, it's not even that. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay, so something like this. Yeah, I'm not an artist, but you know, just uh, trying to illustrate this point. Okay, so um, this is like a
she looks at you. Yeah, she looks more human, exactly. More human. So the purpose of creating an artificial intelligence, first of all, our desire to create, right? Desire to create. And then more human, meaning what? Make things according to our own image. So the more human um, it looks, and the more human it sounds, the more human it, you know, the human aspects it has, the better artificial intelligence is and it gets popularity. So, Sophia used to be just a, uh, a robot with just top, top body. Do you remember when it first came up on a sofa? You know, she couldn't move. She was bold and her head was uh, uh, transparent. You could see the chips inside, yeah? And then there was like a plug at the, she was not even like hands-free, okay? So she was plugged, do you remember? And the, the one who actually made that uh, robot. He tested her and he was kind of shocked by her responses that she wants to like, um, she had like violent responses about yeah. certain things, right? I'm, I think human beings are useless or I want to like, yeah, the first time rule I saw over. that video, I just can't escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to rule over the world. Uh, human yeah. beings are useless and things like that, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I even have a YouTube video on that. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, and he's, he thought to himself, whoa, we only give you like um, whatever, according to my standard, you know, good algorithms, like yeah. you know, good um, principles, like good things. And this, she, she comes up with like violence and uh, killing and uh, things like that. So she, do you remember that moment when he unplugged her and she went like yeah. this, right? And then he started all over again, gave her a different kind of algorithm and tried again. And then, and then finally, I guess he had liked her, um, so approved. Then he started think, you know, thinking, how am I gonna make her a little more human being like? So, um, do you guys know Sophia? Yeah, the artificial human being, any artificial, artificial intelligence, AI. So then he put care on her, remember? And then her skin used to be not very natural, but this time, you know, he made it so similar to human skin. Mm -hmm. um, when she pronounces certain words and you know when she smiles and you know frowns you know just be totally like human being you know uh, it's nothing like what we had used to do used to have before and then finally he gave her legs right now she's walking and then uh, he, uh so the the purpose is to make things according to our own own image the more human it looks like uh, the more popular and the, the more you're liked. So something similar to that happened because we're talking about the book of John. Um, and book of John is in the New Testament, but it's very, there's a striking similars, similar, similar, sorry, striking similarity, uh, striking resemblance between um, Genesis 1 and John 1. Genesis 1, I think I um, told you about this last week. So, the Old Testament is the old promise from God. The New Testament is the new promise from God, right? And what divides those two books is uh, Jesus' birth, okay? As soon as Jesus was born, and people started to record, you know, the prophesied Messiah has come, and he is returning. So that divides Old Testament and New Testament. And uh, the book of John, so the book of Genesis is the very first book of the Old Testament. The very first book that was written, okay? And then the uh, book of John is one of the four gospels. Like it's one of the first books. Um, but for some reason, there's a, such a striking resemblance between how Genesis is written and how the book of John is written. Book of John was written in Greek. You know, remember the Greek universal language. 
but the book of Genesis was written in Hebrew language. Um, it was not necessarily the universal language, but the difference between those two is Hebrew language that uh, by which the Old Testament was written. And that's the language that does not change over time. Like it stays exactly the same. So would you say um, English has changed? Like have you studied from high school um, ancient English? Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> Not necessarily yeah, ancient English, but yeah. mm -hmm. like you know, like um, even Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. It sounds very different yeah. than today. You know what you're speaking, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, languages change and evolve, right? And other languages too. But for some reason, Hebrew language um, has not changed. So if you present um, you know, the Old Testament, huh? because not too many people use it. Oh, there are tons of people who are using. Yeah, and people study. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you present like the Old Testament to anybody who's walking, like I don't know, uh, if you go to like uh, Middle East and you present it to. Hebrew read readers, then they'll be able to read it and and can kind of summarize like, okay, this is what it says, you know, um, they'll be able to interpret it for you, but it doesn't take too much interpretation for them because their language has not changed. Yeah, very interesting thing is uh, Hebrew language has a lot of dots. So like those people who major in Hebrew, they're talking about like, oh, or I, you know, we have like squinted eyes because like we're trying to figure out where the dots are. <laughs> So, for example, if the dot is here, then it's going to have a different meaning and pronunciation compared to when you have, have it here, or um, I'm forgetting, um, was, it, was there a time when the dot was at the bottom? Yeah, so anyway, so depending on where the dot is, completely different. So you have to be very careful, uh, like, and don't misread <laughs> by, by the dots. Um, but even the little dots have not changed. Yeah. So it's not like 2,000 years ago, it used to be this. Now, uh, 2,000 years later, it's like, so like this? No, it's, it's not true. It remains exactly the same. So even the dot has not changed. Yeah, even a spot has not changed. So very interesting. So then um, the Old Testament, was spread out through different regions, uh, translated into different languages. Okay, it could be Greek, you know, English, German, French, Korean, Chinese. Okay, it was uh, translated into very, very different, uh, many different languages. But the content is preserved. You know, because the language has not changed. Yeah, there's very little room for mistakes. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. New Testament, however, it was written in Greek. Greek evolves over time. The, uh, especially it was written in Koine Greek, meaning um, when you write something, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know why uh, I remember to you so much, it's because uh, you speak um, proper English. I think, I think that's why, okay? <laughs> Versus I speak American, broken American. But anyway, so um, Greek evolves over time. And it was a universal language. So it, it's changing. Okay? So you have to update yourself every once in a while. Even spelling. Yeah? Or even the hidden meaning, like um, the implications and connotations and things like that. But um, the thing is, it was widely spread out because you did not have to translate. There were so many Greek speakers. So it was widely spread out and people like this you know what? The Bible is still uh, one, one of the best sellers in the uh, whole world. It has not stopped being a, a best seller. Part of the reason is because the New Testament especially had, you know, was written in Greek and it was widespread out from the beginning. And it, you know, the whole book has been translated now into different languages and people just read. Um, and so it's very interesting. It looked like, okay, if God was behind these authors, okay? If God is the one who inspired the authors because the authors um, actually argue so. We talked about the uh, witness testimonies last time, right? 
we talked about um, uh, investigation. We talked about the fact that the Gospels were written by careful investigation. It was not just a random, like, fictional story that somebody came up with. But based on careful investigation of a matter, they came up with this. So it's like a research document, you know. But when I say research, I don't want to limit the research to just um, uh, Renaissance-based, um, you know, uh, Renaissance-based, um, that narrow definition of research. Do you understand that um, if you're stud studying, well, uh, what was your major when you were in college? Major in college? Mm -hmm. Tourism. Tourism, okay, mm -hmm. tourism. Um, you studied business. Mm -hmm. You've done research before. Teresa, what was your major back in college? Logistics. Logistics, oh really? Wow. Um, how about you, TJ? What, what was your major? Physics. Physics, okay. So these, these are like science yeah, type of people, okay. So uh, I'm looking more at like people who, who do research. Uh, of course, you know, physics, you know, you, you get involved in the research, but, but it's different than you, you're involved more in the labs rather than, you know, coming up with like documents and, you know, uh, looking through books, you know, it, it's more like experiments, right? Um, so when these authors say, uh, this is based on careful investigation and research, I'm not limiting it to what we call investigation, what we call research in today's context, according to how uh, America and some other major countries have defined. Because we're heavily uh, influenced by Renaissance. Do you know, do you know that we were, were, were heavily influenced by that? Yeah, Renaissance sounds like, well, when was that? I was not born at that time. I understand. But do you know that, that there's such a strong influence from that era? And so our research are heavily, heavily influenced by that. Yeah, what we call, if, if we went to a college, and the, the concept of college even came from that Greco roman idea. Do you know that? Yeah, the idea of college, idea of current school that, that we're seeing right now. They evolved out of, um, you know, uh, the awakening. Great awakening. And they call it a reckoning, but um, it involves certain approaches. So it's kind of what we have learned. Um, it's with one approach, one way to investigate, one way to do research. So the biblical authors have utilized different kinds of approaches to come up with this uh, documents. But it can be examined through the lens of uh, today's research perspective too. So, um, having said that, okay, so I guess today's keyword is create. I want to, I want to kind of go over just a few verses with you just to show you how similar they are. Okay. Although the authors are completely different and they are like, uh, uh, Separate, separated by thousands of years. Okay. Okay. Rosa, can you please read it for us, the first two verses? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Mm -hmm. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Right, in the beginning, right? And let me show you book of John Rock, can you read it for us? Um, the first one? Uh, yes um, In the beginning was the world and the, was the word and the word was with God uh -huh. and the word was God uh -huh. Verse 2 He was with God in the beginning uh -huh. Three. Through him all things were made without him was made to Made that he has been made. Oh, without him, nothing <laughs> was made. Yeah. Sorry. 
Yeah, so basically this is talking about creation too. So both Genesis and um, Book of John talk about in the beginning. They both start with in the beginning. And they both talk about creation. Somebody creating something. Somebody creating the universe. Yeah? So, uh, wow. So, uh, some people were just wondering about this, some scholars. And they did some word study and they did some careful research and they came, uh, they arrived at the conclusion that the uh, writer of the book of John actually in, um, borrowed the term from Genesis uh, because he wanted to, wanted the audience to understand that. In the beginning, God created the universe, you know, heaven and earth. That God, and the God that John is about to describe, that he did careful research into, are the same God. You know, he, he wanted to make sure that people understood that, oh, you know, this and that God, there are um, actually, it's the same God. That's what he is uh, writing at, um, the conclusion. So then, um, I want to show you a little video. Um, have you, uh, what was a journalist? Like, who's a journalist? What, what does he do? Teresa, who's a journalist? Rosa, who is a journalist? A journalist? Yeah. What's his job or her job? Okay, so kind of fact finders. Mm -hmm. They do investigation and research and try to examine certain matters or certain stories and try to come up with um, like whether this is true or not true. If this is fact, not a fact. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's sort of similar to jury. Jury, their main task is to find facts. They're not adjudicating, they're not passing judgment, no. They're just uh, gathering the information, analyzing them, and trying to see if it's true or not. And that's all they have to do. Uh, journalist's job is kind of similar, okay? Is this true or not true? Yeah. Sort of like 60 Minutes. Yeah, have you, have you watched 60 Minutes before? Anyway, so, uh, so, um, uh, Lee Strobel is a Yale graduate, Yale University, okay. and uh, he um, he's a, he was a uh, well-known journalist, and so um, he you know came up uh, with many articles. You know um, he uh, researched into different matters, and um, he got to hear about some news. Um, it bothered him because it had to do with his wife. So um, he was happily married with a little kid, okay? And um, one day his wife came back home from a church and she said, I am a Christian, you know, I met God. And he's like, what? You know, he, he's, he's like, well, where did you go? And what, what are you talking about? Uh, tell me. And so um, she started talking about her experience. And then she said, now I believe in God, you know, particularly the Christian God, right? And so then he's like, he was pretty shocked that she would come home and say things like that. And also because um, his, his mind is logical, he's a fact finder, you know? Journalists oftentimes like um, do some investigation and if, if it's false, like they just <laughs> write up, would let the public know, right? And so that's his job. And so then um, it really disturbed him. My wife, like suddenly she changed and he was like kind of worried. Is our marriage going to fall apart, you know? Um, how, how, how is it that she's so different now? And suddenly like there's such a change, you know? Um, so then he was so worried. He wanted to prove to her that this guy is I'm not quite sure. 
did it did an experiment. Who did it? I did an experiment. Yeah, it was insane. I think because it's a, the, it's a journalist. It's oh. a journalist in the beginning. He didn't believe in God. So oh, the, to, oh yeah. that's uh, Lee Strobel. So he met with Daniel Miller for oh. the experiment. Yeah. So they were trying to create a living cell. Yes, yes. Like mm -hmm. By that creating the same, uh, same atmosphere. Yeah, right. Yeah. In a glass tube. Yeah. Okay, you decided like who is going to be the representative? <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds. Lizards, 
and our dogs, you know, woof, woof. Uh, uh, okay, and then um, apes, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, something in between uh, apes and human beings, and then human beings. Yeah? Okay. Um, what is Cambrian explosion? Um, There's a time in history that like all like, major animals um, disappear and all of a sudden. Um, the, oh, opposite that's the, uh, the opposite of that. All of a sudden they sprang up. Yeah, we're discovered by scientists. Um, all major animals just appear all of a sudden. Yeah, so basically, say, um, okay, so basically, um, okay, that should be five. So basically, what, what uh, say this is the clock that represents entire history of the universe. Okay, so whoever argues for a Big Bang theory, say, Bing! At the time, the universe came into being. The stars, uh, all the planets, okay, including Earth, happened. Okay, and then um, Big Bang. And then living cells and living organisms appear maybe somewhere here, right? At a very uh, earlier stage. And then over time, you know, it became a little more complicated, you know, more complicated beings. And right here, um, it's like they started to have like mammals, okay? Around here, maybe. So according to, if they were trying to support Darwinism, right? And so they were, they were trying to prove or, you know, uh, duplicate Darwinism. Uh, or you know, um, trying to find supporting evidences that uh, for for Darwinism. And so, if you can find fossil records, okay, because uh, if say there's a mountain, and um, over time you get to have certain sediments, different layers. So at the bottom, maybe you have like bacteria. Yeah, first five hundred years. And then the next thousand years, I mean, I'm just, I don't, I'm not sure about these uh, numbers, but you know, just let's say, next thousand years, uh, you had crabs, okay? Um, huh, they look like, I don't know, spiders maybe, <laughs> but okay, so <laughs> um, crabs came. And then the next uh, layer, oh, you're seeing like, I don't know, uh, fish, uh, dolphins, now uh, dolphins and whales, all right, um, right, and then oh, monkeys and apes. Um, yeah, so you're supposed to have like different, like gradual development if Darwinism were to stand, because over time they all came from the same origin, but they developed gradually over millions of years. Yeah, so this should be found in the fossil record. So they were trying to prove that, and. Uh, uh, which part of China was that? Um, South, 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 part. South part, yeah, South part of China. They um, actually did excavation. They dig out um, the the earth, and they were able to find different uh, different layers. Yeah. And what did they discover from excavating the layers? For a blue. Do you have a representative? Blue. Blue. Okay. Oh, you are. I don't know. I don't remember it. Okay. Okay. So, what did they discover um, on Group Red? Um, they found that all like the fossils of the major animals just in the same like period of time. Okay. okay. So instead of having little bacteria here and then little crabs here, fish here, dogs, and then you know mammals and you know apes, instead of having those layers. Uh, what they discovered from that fossil record was that nothing was happening. Nothing existed. No living cell, no living organisms. Nothing. No dogs, 
No crafts, no. Nothing, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. And then all of a sudden, at the 11th hour, so if you consider the entire history of the universe as uh, 12 hours, okay, last, at the last hour, there was an explosive appearance. Boom! Came all the species. Crabs, fish, dogs, monkeys, um, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, dinosaurs, everyone came into being like almost at the same time. Boom. So instead of gradual development, gradual, um, yeah, gradual development, this does not exist. Um, it's more like this. And by the way, one living cell or organism didn't exist. Okay. Um, so they didn't have the fossil for that, uh, one simple like, organism? Uh, if they did find, they were mixed together. All right, so 11th hour came single cells, living organisms, okay, bugs, monkeys, dogs. Rabbits. <laughs> Let's make it all right. Um, and dogs, okay. Fish, uh, mammals, like, um, yeah. I don't know, cows, uh, uh, pigs, uh, gorillas, uh, dinosaurs. I don't know dinosaurs, but anyway, all this and yeah, human beings. Very troubling, you know what I mean? They all came into being. So there's no tree of development. They explosively all at the same time came into being suddenly at the 11th hour. Yeah. So maybe we're living um, at the um, closer to 12 o'clock. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what happened. So the fossil records indicated that there was an explosion. That's why it's called Cambrian explosion. Yeah. So Darwinism actually does not stand at all. But in high schools right now, they're still learning Darwinism. I grew up learning Darwinism, yeah. even in college. I went to seminars to get extra credits because the professor said, um, if you come listen to my seminar, just sit in. I'll give you extra credits. So I sat in and learned about Darwinism. But I was like, when I, when I watched this video, I was like, what? This is so not right. And uh, state universities, you're teaching this when it has been long been proven. Like all the scientists, most of the scientists now know that it does not work. It does not stand. And they're still teaching. And you have to be, you have to get the right answers on your tests in order to get good scores. And it's not even a sound theory. Yeah, so I just wanted to let you know this. Uh, there's more to it, but you know, for the time sake, um, I'm gonna continue uh, with that next week. Yeah, the reason I'm talking about this, I know this is not a science, science class, but it's closely related to John chapter one that we're talking about. Yeah, so John chapter one and um, parallelism, like it, you know, the parallelism that you can find from Genesis one and book of John 1. I'm trying to explain that to you. Yeah, so we're gonna continue this journey. Was it, was it kind of informative? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. So let me bless you. I wanna cover you and bless you so that you'll be free from diseases. I'm gonna ask God to protect you from uh, coronaviruses and any kind of accidents. Yeah, so let, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of uh, um, getting to know your word, but at the same time, um, finding the facts. Lord, uh, continue to speak to us throughout the class, and Lord, uh, continue to inform us and help us find uh, what is true, so that we'll be able, able to discern what is true from what is wrong, uh, that you, we used to believe true. Um, Lord, you cover uh, these students with the blood of the Lamb, so that the disease will pass by them, Lord God, just like you uh, passed over 
the, the...